Okay, today we have gathered here and I'm, I'm very glad and happy that we have two guests, uh, Acham Mahachi and uh, Acham Patom from Bararat Buddhist International Buddhist Center. If, if I never pronounce wrongly, they came to visit us. And uh, again, as I say, even though we are from different tradition, I always emphasize that it's not a tradition. If we are from the same tree, like a Bodhi tree. The tree got so many branches branching out through many directions, but we are from the same root, uh, the root of the Buddha. So we same, we share the same value of sila samadhi panya, dana sila pavana, or the, the teachings, fundamental teachings of the Buddha, they encourage uh, we mankind to do good, avoid evil, and purify your mind. Now, but when we say that, when we come to a foreign land, it's our duty to uphold, upkeep, and let the Dharma be alive in these regions by practicing our mode of conduct, that's our sila, and teaching of the Buddha, uh, which is everybody is doing. And this is very important. And uh, the lay people, sometimes they doesn't know. The actions that we do is very important because People have eyes to see, people have ears to, you know, they can listen. And sometimes whatever thing they want to know, just one click away. They just click the computer, they can find all the information. And nowadays it's very, very <clears throat> scary. Eh? So if we are not careful, we might fall into the traps of the media. We may get ourselves involved with unnecessary accusations. So we've got to be very, very careful, you know every action and this is important and especially even the lay people the lay people buddhism can only survive if the four group of people supported like in our theravada buddhism we don't have pikuni we only have piku samanera upasaka upasika that means the lay devotee right we only have these four group of people in order for buddhism to survive you need this four group of people to support each other the lay people do the duty of the lay by supporting the member of the Sangha so they don't have to be worried about their food, their lodging, their medicine when they are sick, and their jiwara, that means their robes or uniform. Right? This is very important. If without any component, it's not complete at all. So we try to establish, we try very hard. And I can see that many Buddhist institute has uh, rooted and grounded and grow in Australia, right, and then it's expanding uh, somehow stillly and uh, gradually. And of course, we don't measure uh, the success of temple through uh, how many devotees you have, or how many good food, or how many uh, uh, new blocks you build. Instead, we look at how you produce good human value, how we train the people, how we influence the society in the, the, the approach of skillfulness, wholesomeness, in the way of sila samadhi panya. And this is very important, right? We don't compete in the materials world. If we were to compete in this material thing externally, the lay people are better because the lay people got no problem. But we as a Buddhist entity, especially monastery, we should be easily fed, self-sufficient, uh, self-sufficient, that means we do according within our mean. We're not going to do things and get ourselves caught up with debts and uh, a lot of things we got to solve it and this is unhealthy because why like, we'll be spending most of the time how to get funding here, get funding. This is not right. We should be emphasizing more on our mental development. And this is very important because why like, if you were to educate the people and the people benefited from the teachings of the Buddha, in no time they will turn back to pay the gratitude. I saw this type of uh, many examples, those lay people that we have trained and helped them, and they have a very naughty son. But because of our patience and the trainings that we provided for the, for the son, in the end, when the son grew up and he made a good fortune, he come back to the temple to support. And this is how we, we receive things in a noble way, a very pure, way of getting the donation. Right? We don't have to tell lies. We don't have to cook up story. This is not a pure. It's not pure. It's not noble. A noble, pure donation is people who arrive
realizing this wholesome thought, I want to do something good for the place. And Kaz, he take his action, he done it. And every time we see people doing chanting in the hall, don't have to suffer the cold, don't have to suffer the heat when it's hot season, right, under the shade. Those donors, they feel very happy. And this is very pure, very noble kind of dana donations. We want this kind of donation, which is pure. Right? We don't want to have the kind of, we need to skirt around here, telling lies here, making false claim. This is, no, not noble. This is this is not, not honest enough. So it's very important. It's very important because why? when our mind is not straight, it's not pure, it's not noble, it's not honest, then our mind can't be calm. It was always very, very heat, heated up. Heated up with what? Unwholesome thought. Heated up with how to how to how to skirt around the thing. You always involving with all this kind of unwholesome thinking. So how can your mind be be calmed down? We can't. So this is what happened. The the mind state. A human mind. Happiness comes from where? From the mind. If your mind is not happy, you can own a thousand, a million, million dollars. You will never be happy. Likewise, any monastery in the world, you can have big, big monastery. But if you can build a monastery without this uh, pure, noble, honest donation, there will be a slight guilt inside there that will cause this kind of unhappiness in the mind. This kind of dissatisfaction, a kind of dukkha. But if you get it in a noble way, in a very pure way, without asking people have the satta, the faith in the Buddha's teaching, they will come forward. They come forward not because you can speak well. They come forward because of your action, your honesty, your straightness, and your uplifting of the Buddha's teaching. And this is very, very important. And if we never maintain that, like I say, you can build big, big monastery, but you cannot fight with the world tallest building. They can build, no problem. But when we talk about religion, we talk about honesty, purity, intention, pure honest, and not skirting around, not being as you know, cunning, you know, like dishonor. We don't want that. So this will be the message I would like to share with you all. Okay? And the monk will do the blessing now. Okay, uh I will speak in English now. Huh? We talk about monastery or temple, right? When we talk about temple, huh? monastery, there's a monastery externally, vihara, we call vihan, vihara externally, that means a building, a building, a house, right? Or center in the city, and the internal monastery, the internal temple, deep in your heart, your heart. Now, how during the Buddha time, there was they just the lay people just support the sangha because during the Buddha's time there was no such thing as committee member no such thing it's only lay people who have the faith in the Buddha's teaching and they know that the monk got to practice their purification of their own mind so that they got no time for worldly thing no time not enough time if you really practice there's not enough time at all you walk the whole day whole night huh Oh, you, how come? Dark already. Oh, you, not enough time to use. No? Because why? The mice still haven't come down yet. Like crazy like that. So, the lay people support the bank with food, with lodging, with medicine, with the jivara, the ropes. So that the monk can practice peacefully without worrying that got nothing to eat, no place to stay. When I sick, no one bring me to hospital. To, for medicine or, or things like that and not enough uh, 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 jivon ropes. We have plenty nowadays. So that, no problem really. But the problem is nowadays, this modern society, because of the lack of practice, we take the world first. When we take the world first, there's going to be a lot of problems. Everything, ah, oh, the law say this, the law say that. Yeah, the law say that, but we operate like a monastery. We operate like a monastery, like a family unit. Everybody are like brother, sister. The monk, we support the monk. Then, no problem. Then you'll be a good place. 
to learn something because when the monk practice, Dharma arises in them, insight arises in them, then they will share with the lay people. And when the lay people hear this kind of Dharma, they are very inspired, they are very happy that, oh, they hear something they never heard before, right? And that should be the way, very encouraging. You come to a place of worship, you have a refuge for your heart, a place where you can have something that you can you can rely on. That if I go to that, I feel very peaceful, I feel very nice, very calm, and I hear things very agreeable to the mind, and it's very conducive to the practice. Then people would like to go to the, the monastery to practice. And this is the right kind of monastery we are nurturing, we are trying to build. We're not going to build huh, a lot of building to inspire people. No, we want to build our heart, the monastery inside our world. This is more important. External thing, you look at Melbourne, so many big buildings. You look at the people there, their mental state. Hell, because why? They got to crack on the head. Installment, got to pay for something. <laughs> and if you're jobless, they give them hell. The mind got worried. So it's not external thing, it's more on your mind state. That's why we emphasize a lot on the practice. That's why when we come to a monastery, we want to encourage lay people to come and practice. Not to come in, I will want to vote who want to be the committee. Want to, no, everybody are committee, everybody are committed in supporting the Sangha. It's just a terminology. We want some people to volunteer and do the thing. That's all. That's all. No big deal. <coughs> the most important thing is our intention. Do we help with a happy heart? Are we willingly volunteering that we help? We are very happy. We are very inspired. We want to help because it's something we want to you know, go forward. We want to push forward for realizations of making this place a very noble, a very pure. Everything that we get it, we get to the pure way, righteous way, very honest way. We're not going to tell lies. We're not going to go around the bush. Tell, we're not going to do that. We're going to get things through the honest way, very honest. We don't ask. Let the people see by themselves, know by themselves, feel by themselves. We don't have to go and heal. No need. When people are ready, they will come by themselves because they'll be inspired by the action. Not by how well you talk, but how well you perform, how well you behave yourself. It's not how well we write. No. No, 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 we don't have to do that. You see the Buddha's time. The Buddha only realization of the Dharma and the preaching of the Dharma. You see how the Buddha established Buddhism throughout the whole world. Now, did he, did he have to ask people to do this? Don't have to. Things just happen by itself. But there are certain entities, certain places, right, with, which I believe if the Buddha will be doing alive, I used to if the Buddha will be doing alive, yeah, Alama, why like that? Nah? <laughs> what is that thing happening? They are not doing the right thing. But of course, each do their own karma, each do their own tradition. We are not going to criticize. We go heaven because of our own action, our own mindful thought. Where are we going to go? Depend on ourselves. If our mind is always ventured or the approach is always on good deed, wholesome deed, skillful means. You don't worry. You will develop good karma all the time. Have the thoughts of compassion all the time. You develop this good karma within yourself all the time. Every second. You don't allow unwholesome thought to take charge of you. Even though there's an unwholesome thought arising, jealousy, angry, but you don't react. You just say that, okay, I know this is bad, but no, don't react. Right? Ah. Uh, this one we want to develop. But if your mind, on the other hand, always dwell in the state of mind, anger, furious, shouting, not happy, you're going to go now to hell. Because of this unwholesome state of mind, everything, white color become black color. Black color become white color. They can't see things. Because why? The mind state has dwelt in the state of mechatity, wrong view. This is very scary, you know, because if a person holds so, holds so firmly to his wrong view or to her wrong view, that's it. Go down. Huh? No heaven, no ticket for heaven, only down only. So why I got to cautious? Because in this modern society we have, everybody got this mind state. Everybody got their own pride, own ego, 
own identity that you also one of them. Why should I give him? This is my right. You see? But if the Buddha time or the Buddha is alive, say Tama Tipatai, we use the Dharma first. Not the worldly thing. Come on. The Dharma is more sophisticated, more powerful than this worldly law. This worldly law, nothing. You just take honesty, one honesty enough. This good principle, honest with yourself, honest with the law. That's all. It covers everything. Covers responsibility, everything. It covers already. Just honest. Be honest with what you're doing. Honest. And fulfill the responsibility with what you're doing. You're getting done. And you're honest. This is the right way. A very noble, very pure way we get things done. And that should be the way. So when people, we hear it, we stay here, we also feel comfortable. We don't feel eh, not feeling right. You know? So it's important to highlight. Eh? It's important to highlight this type of thing because uh, if, if, we, if we, as a monk, don't uphold, don't encourage and say, hey, stop. We want to blow the booze whistle. Stop. This is not the right thing to do thing. Then it's dangerous. How people will look at you, how people look at the whole entity that, oh, they are not honest. Huh? Ah, you see? Finish. Finish. We are, we are upholding Buddhism. We are upholding the teachings of the Buddha. We are upholding our own personal karma for ourselves. No one else. You, yourself, everybody got to play a part to responsible for your own words, thought, and actions. And that's the Buddha's teaching. Remember, huh? okay, now the man will give the blessing now. Okay, before the monks give the blessings, when you come to a place of worship, it's a place for your mind where you can take refuge, you can have some peace. Now, this is what the place of worship or monastery is for. And especially when you come to a place where there are Buddhist monks, right, and you will find that eh, the question will arise, why should we bring food? Right? Maybe a lot of Westerners, they are not uh, familiar with the offering of food to the Buddhist monk, you know, so they might mistaken that oh, monks are like those homeless uh, uh, street people, you know, they don't have a job, you know, they got to, it's totally different, right, because when you give up your worldly life and you become a Buddhist monk, you know, there are many precepts or so-called protocol, rules and regulations we got to abide with, to follow, and because the monk doesn't handle money, doesn't cook, a lot of things, the monk doesn't get involved. And so what does the monk do in that case? The question will be the next, and what, what are they doing? You know, they can't just take the food for free. So that is a very good question. Normally, there will be a lot of doubts, and this is uh, something new in the Western world. And it's picking up because why? No matter how we human beings, in whatever nationality, which country we come from, it doesn't matter. We human beings, when we are born, we have this mind and body, yes, this mind of ours, when it's not trained, when it's not being informed or hearsay, normally we will take the world first. We follow what is the trend of the society is on and we go for that. And this is not wrong if it's morally compliance. But most of the time it is not. Right? We landed up with a lot of remorse and suffering within our own mind because our mind is always engineered by a lot of greed, wanting. Right? We, learn, we learn, want a lot of things in our life. We need this, we need that, you know. We buy so much things, so much clothing, so much food, so much, so many things. We want it. But what we really need is very, very few, very minimum. And, and as, as this is a society of consumerism, we see that we have all these convenience shops, shopping center. So most of the people, they don't encounter hardship. So the system of the country has been more in this way that we we got to earn a lot of money so that we can enjoy life. And yes, we earn a lot of money, but we enjoy life. And then on the other hand, we feel that we are not happy at all. And this is most of the people, they get very frustrated. When we encounter something that is not fulfilling in their life, they are very sad. They are taken back by what is happening to their life. And this is something which is very alarming in our this 
modern society, we have young people committing suicide, you know, a lot of uh, things that is detrimental to our mental health. That is because there is no institution, or even there is all this what we call religious organization trying to advocate the goodness, the good quality for mankind, and people just turn a blind eye to it. That what we are doing now is the practicing of generosity. When we practice generosity, we feel good. A person who gives, he feels good. A person who practice compassion, he feels good. Kindness, forgiving, he feels good. Because the mind state, when you give, forgive someone who has offended us. We have the compassion for the people who are less fortunate than us. Your mind is very soft. Your mind is very bright. We feel good. After practicing generosity, we feel good. And of course, in the practicing of generosity, there must be what we call this pure intention of, I want to do it. And as a person wants to do certain good things, it springs up in the mind, the thoughts of good intentions. And these good intentions further into speech, actions, preparations. And in the continuation of this doing, he will consider things, he thinks what is good, what is no good, you know, what is what are the, a lot of things very consideration, very considered kinds of thinking. And after doing that, they execute the action, they come and offer it. So after offering it, they feel very happy. And every time they thought, think about it, of helping other people, they feel glad. They feel peaceful, they feel happy, thrilling, you know, they have done something good. And especially when we do certain things which is meritorious to a charitable organizations. And when we see somebody build something, we assist or volunteer or contribute it. And after the completion, we see the completion of, of, of a project. And we feel the kind of sigh, the kind of happiness, the gladness arises in our heart. Right? We rejoice uh, with all these good deeds people do. And this is what we call generosity, right? which is practiced in many, many religions, uh, not only Buddhist. And furthermore, and we, we, when we say that we practice Sometimes we find that, hey, how come inside my mind, I'm still, you know, sometimes get very angry, very jealous, very boiled up with certain issue. Or then we said, okay, look at your behavior. Did we involve in killing? Did we involve in stealing? We involve all this, uh, what we call that, uh, lying, telling lies, taking drugs, all this uh, illicit sex or sexual misconduct. We got to take into all this consideration, the five precepts. And this is very important because why? The flaring of this craving is always the source of suffering for the mind. Because the mind keeps craving for one thing of thing that we still haven't get it. And this craving is boiling, burning deep in our heart. Right? And it's, it's a form of what we call stress, very stressful state of mind. And a lot of people suffer that. So the practicing of restraint and the practicing of meditation, calming of the mind. Uh, comes into action now. That's why we have morning service, evening serving, coming of the mind, listening to Dharma talk. Right? The whole purpose is to encourage people to do good, uh, avoid all the evils, evil actions, evil thoughts, and purify our mind. And that is the whole purpose in uh, encourage people to do all this meritorious and the good human value to be instilled in oneself. So. As for people, like when we come to a place of worship, it's always our duty as a monk, right, to encourage people to do good. And that will be the sharing for today. Now the monk will give the blessing now. Sanitangu tapa chahinu 
Oh, uh-huh.